What's up guys and welcome to part 1 of the Ultimate Guide to Dark Souls 3. Yeah, so it's finally here. Yeah, we've been working endlessly. Yeah, so, right, we've just got to get straight in it. As you see, we're on the character creation screen. screen. Just go Knight Class and pick a Fire Gem. You need literally nothing else. Don't even think that anything else is even slightly better. That's what you're picking. Don't question it. People say the Sorcerer's better, but if you want no HP and like no stamina, then sure do that, but... Um, no, just the knight is ridiculously good. It has a 100 block shield, the long sword's one of the best weapons in the game, the armor is one of the best sets in the game, so just pick the knight, use the fire gem. Yeah. Trust us. So, obviously, just do as we do, and I guess maybe just explain how to use this guide. The guide will cover literally everything. All NPC quests, uh, all items, except from like, three, which you can only get by doing certain things, which basically conflict. Like. Yeah. There's one, in, there's, like, there's one item that you can't get for doing one NPC quest, which is one that we're doing because it leads to more items essentially. Yeah. So we're getting pretty much as most, as much as you can get, and we'll obviously mention the things that you can get, or we'll tell you how to get it regardless. Yeah. Uh, you don't have to do exactly what we do, but we recommend it if you're a first time player anyway. Yeah, we get every single item that's available for you to pick up in the game, so... Yeah. Or obviously mention ways of getting items, drops, etc. Yeah. So now this thing here is one of like the new crystal lizards they put in the game. Um, very aggressive, sort of looks like Godzilla's, uh, like little baby Godzilla's. Yeah. So with these guys, obviously you want to just constantly be going towards like their right side, and then just do a few hits, and then just make sure you've got your. Yeah. The camera freaks the fuck out here. It like clipped me through the terrain, so that wasn't like a fuck up in the recording. That was just the game did that. Yeah. So once you uh, hit it a few times, it will get launched back into that sort of stunned animation yeah. you got behind the R1. It, it takes about seven or eight hits or something like that to stun it. They just try and get in front of it and uh, hit R1 and grab that repulse. Now this thing drops Titanite skills, which you upgrade boss weapons with. Um. But yeah, these things are sort of fairly simple. They're, like, they're a lot more menacing at first, but once you get used to the timing of the uh, like rolling the bite and stuff like that, then you realise these things aren't that bad. Yeah, plus the souls you get from it are fairly useful at this point in the game, because it's quite a lot, 4,000 souls. Yeah. So even if you die, just keep grinding away at it until you kill it, because you don't have any souls to lose at this point anyway. Yeah, it is worth it to beat that, definitely, because the 4,000 souls comes in handy after the boss when you can uh, level up for the first time. For those of you who are in New Game Plus, just back where we killed that big crystal, there should be a speckled stone plate ring as well, just opposite the soul packet. Yeah, so unlike other guides that we've done, this will actually cover New Game Plus, because yeah. there isn't that many drastic changes. Now, apparently, so these enemies that we've been fighting, the like, uh, hollows and the rags, apparently the ones in this area have a chance to drop the, sac the cleric chime, but the ones before it, like the ones in there, like the actual very beginning, might drop it as well. We're not 100% sure on that, but yeah, they can also drop these Fade ones do. Also. These ones do drop the cleric chain and uh, Fade and Soul, yeah. Yeah, so we're just uh, continuing on, just killing these enemies. There's really, you should have absolutely no problem with this, no yeah. matter what class you are. Uh, now, we're going to pick up fire bombs. You might have heard, like, you know, use fire on the, uh, the creatures in the game that are like. Uh, stage two of this boss. Don't use your fire bombs because we've actually got a use for them. Yeah. So you don't want to run out of fire bombs. Or, like obviously you can buy another one, sure, but you get them for free, so why bother? Yeah. No. Uh, you don't need them anyway. You don't need them for the boss, and they are useful for just general things that yeah. we'll be doing uh, later on in the game. Again, none of that, that's none of that is necessary, but it is very, it's very useful. Yeah. So. So, <clears throat> coming up here, you got to run and jump at literally the last second to make this. you got to jump from the edge of the rock, aim for the tree, of course, and uh, yeah, tiny shards. Yeah. And there's a guy down here, so plunge attack. So, I mean, I suppose maybe we can, uh, right, in fact, actually, right, so we've got to be going at the boss. This boss is, like... Oh, Wolf Ring will be here in New Game no, Plus. No, 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 yeah, it's, it's the next. Is it the next section? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you sure? Yep. Alright, okay. I'll take your word for it. Okay. Yes, I will believe you. Yeah, you're right. Fact, yes, I will believe myself. Yeah. yeah. Okay, anyway. <clears throat> okay, so go up to... Uh, Two hand and wail on him. Yeah, so you want to get this just free damage in immediately. Yeah, and then back off. Use a full stamina bar, then back away, and there you go, you get a nice little chunk of damage. So this guy can be parried, as we'll show you in a second. Now, uh, for new players, sure, this guy could maybe pose a bit of a threat. He's not too hard, not too easy either, though. There you go, that's pretty you can parry him and repost him. Um, now, the key thing to do with Gundyr here, because it's a Yundex Gundyr, is you just keep your distance away from him. Stare at the range of his spear, wait for his combos to finish, then go in and get a couple of hits and back away. 
yeah. repeat the process until you're done. That's literally it. And um, the reason you can't do that with the other gun deer is because he has the charge, so you can't really uh, just stay out of range of him because he'll close the gap quickly. This guy doesn't really have any huge gap closers, so outrange him. Get your free hits in, roll away, keep the distance exactly like we are doing now. Yeah. Stage two is a little tougher, but um, Bark it's, is it, worse than the bite. Yeah, it's way more intimidating than it looks. Um, basically, has the exact same attack pattern, but the black snake thing also attacks with his halberd, and he also gains a couple of moves. He gains this move, and he has like an uppercut move as well. But just same as last time, get under him and start swinging. Um, he's a fairly simple boss. He's a good first boss, he's a tough first boss, but once you get your timings down and you figure out your range and stuff like that, you shouldn't really have too much of a problem with Gundor. Um, and of course, I index Gundor's soul gets you nothing. No, he doesn't even give you a soul, he gives you the fucking coiled sword, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah I mean, we don't even really need to tell you what the souls do, because whenever you get a soul for a boss... Just uh, go to Lidluth. Yeah, that's really what Because he has literally, every single boss soul, he is the one to interact with it, so... Yeah. It's not like Dark Souls 2 where you had strayed and Orn effects. Now, it's just this part of the guide, we are not going to be using any of our soul packets and we're not going to use any of the boss soul packets either. Wolfring is here, by the way. Yeah, so if you do a 180, just there, right there to the, the right of the door there would be the Wolfring on New Game uh, Plus Plus. But yeah, continue. No soul packets, don't use them. You can use them if you want, obviously, but you'll see what we're going to do with them. And it just it's just basically, we don't use the soul packets just so we can do everything in the game easily without any grinding. Yeah, we don't want to farm. You guys can obviously farm because there's a key in the game that costs 20,000 souls. By the time we buy it, we've got enough soul packets to get it for free. Yeah. So, like, you guys can use soul packets as and when you like and you can level up past us if you want. But it means that you'll probably have to farm to get the items we're getting to go through the exact same progression as us. Whereas if you just don't touch any of the soul packets in the game... Like, we had a pretty easy time through the game on our preliminary run. Yeah. Um, this build is pretty good. I mean, this build is broken. In terms of yeah. PvE, this is probably more broken than the Dark Souls. This is more broken than the Dark Souls 1 build. Yeah. It's um, more broken than. It's not as broken as the Dark Souls 2 boss killer setup. No. But it is more broken than the build that we used in Dark Souls 2. The build in Dark Souls 2 was just smart point spending. Yeah. But. Oh yeah, east west shield. Kill those two hollows up here first because they'll aggro as soon as you pick the shield up. You don't want to get knocked off the edge. Uh, we're also not picking up any drops from enemies either. Just yeah. so uh, it means that what we have is 100% what you will also have. You'll yeah. also get drops. You can use the drops accordingly. We're basically playing the game like the worst case scenario as much as we possibly can so yeah. we don't want random drops where we might get like an extra small titanite shard and then we've upgraded our weapon like one rank higher than it should be and it doesn't make sense so yeah. we're going to completely ignore ragdoll drops and um, we're just going to stick to placed now i get a lot of people ask us oh what should i be doing at this point if you want to know what to do just look ahead to another fucking video please stop asking us that yeah and if there isn't another video, oh yeah, you need to stand in a specific place to like place this. A lot of people complained about this because people just couldn't figure out how to get to the first area for the first couple levels of the game, was it? <laughs> and it's, yeah, whoever. Um, so we've got to talk to this guy to get a gesture. Yeah. Uh, basically, just spend a little bit of time at Firelink Shrine, talk to all the NPCs, uh, exhaust all the dialogue, and yeah. that's, that's pretty much it. Now, these two in particular, because these two give me gestures. Yeah, so we want to talk to this guy, and we're also going to infuse our weapon to be a fire longsword. Now, because we get the fire gem at the very beginning. Of the yeah, game. this is without a doubt the most damage that you can pump out of this part of the game. Oh, also, so. because we're not using magic, we're not going to use any of the blue estus for a very long time. We use a little bit of magic later in the game, but it's literal bare bones stuff, so we're not going to be using ash and estus for yeah. the majority of this playthrough. Um, so obviously, if you guys are going sorcerer, then you're going to have to divide your estus up because of the ash and healing. You need mana as well. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, so now we are going to go up, well, up here, obviously, uh, there's a soul packet, but there's also something else we're going to do. Now, this stuff is, this might be patched out eventually, we need to point this out, but right now, and for a long time, you are able to run up this tree and get on Since the, the day of launch, you've been able to do it. Yeah. Now, we, it is a difficult jump, you got to run up the tree and then jump and turn at the same time and get onto the roof. It's, it's a pain in the ass, but, um... It's we worth do, uh, it definitely because this puts you in really, really great standings for like. But if you can't do it, don't worry. It's not like a massive cornerstone. You're just not as well off, I guess. Yeah. But um, basically, what this gives us is this gives us um, extra Homer bones, uh, uh, an Estus shard, and a covet silver ring. Yeah. 
Now you can come back here. You can do all this once you get the uh, to the twenty grand key. Which we um, will. Uh, there's some stuff that you can't do with twenty without the twenty grand key. We're obviously gonna come back and do that once we have the twenty grand. But we're all, we do that at a very logical point in the game where you need to do an NPC's quest, and there's no point in doing it before you get his quest. So get this crystal lizard, and then back the way you came, and we're gonna go to the top of Firelink Shrine. Um, if you have, if you're having trouble working out the jump, um, I'm pretty sure Vati put it in one of his videos, and I'm pretty sure there's probably going to be about 300 other tutorials on YouTube on how yeah. to do it as well. So uh, just keep trying at it. It is still as of the first of September in the game. Okay, so right, this is Snuggly the Crow, and he's in all the no, games. No, no, this it's is Pickle Pumper, Pumper, Pumper up. whatever. Right, same thing. So you can drop items. Remember, leave, not discard, and he will change an item that you drop to another item. So to save everybody time, we'll put the list of the items that you can drop and the list of items that you'll get in the description, put a wee link there. But for now, what we're gonna do is drop a homeward bone and a drop fire a bomb. fire bomb. These are two very key things because you get a gesture for dropping a homeward bone. And if you drop the fire bomb, you get a large titanite shard and that is very, very key on getting an incredibly powerful weapon very early in the game. Yeah. So, we're going to hit that invisible wall, drop down, get the coveted silver serpent ring. Now, this is essentially going to be our replacements for soul packets, kind of, because we're going to be getting, like, An extra 10% or yeah, something like that. Inherently more souls just as we play the game. Yeah. So, that means that effectively we don't need the soul packets. In the coveted is silver ring just basically doesn't come off. Yeah, basically. It's a perma ring slot that we use for... We, we pretty much use that until we hit, like, level 80, because then we stop leveling up. Yeah. <laughs> But um, talking to Andre, we're going to reinforce Estus with the Estus Shard that we got from upstairs. Um, but yes, yeah, so you've got your reinforced Estus, you've got your Fire Longsword. I think now it's time to level up, get some health, and, um, and then it's time to go take on who is known as the Master. Yeah. Now, there's a very easy way of killing this guy at this stage in the game. It's a bit of trial and error, so don't worry if, you, like, if you're having trouble with it. It does yeah. take a few tries. Like, I died doing it, so... Yeah, but we cut that bit out just for your sake. Oh, then I didn't die doing it. What the fuck am I talking about? <laughs> <laughs> so, like, sticking our armor back on, and yeah, so you run out here. There's a guy with the sword you might have saw earlier. But... Yeah, up by where you got the east west shield. Um, so there's a staircase that faces you right here. Now, there's a little nook in the left side. Of, yeah, you can see where our bloodstain is. Um, basically, you want to aggro the master, and then pull him back to that staircase and you just stop in there and he will do the like the little step in slash the katana sword art yeah. and he will launch himself off the edge if not he'll land on top of you and you'll put his back to the gravity and then just R1 spam till you kill him so he's just helping me get any position with yeah. this master yep see you later so yeah so we get made to try and like throw yourself off the edge and but then exploiting the game because the game lets you do that we're now going to run to the top of these stairs quit and reload to get his stuff so, quitting it, then we're coming back in, fancy editing there, and then his stuff will be at the top of those stairs. Yeah. By the way, that's an abusable thing that you can do, it's an exploitable thing in this game, much like Dark Souls 1. Quitting and reloading the game resets enemy positions, that's things like crystal lizards, um, if you knock an enemy who has a guaranteed drop, if you knock them off like off a ledge and they die of gravity or whatever, and the item you can't be reached, you can quit and reload and the item will drop where they spawn in game. Yeah. So, it's something you can exploit, we're going to use it later on in the game as well, because there's like just an absolute trial by hell later on in the game, so we're just yeah. going to quit reload and go fuck that noise. So the rest of our souls, we are going to level up from the ones that we've got from killing the master. Yep. Now this again puts us in a ridiculous... You cannot get a better start to the game than what we're doing. Yeah, right you've now. got a fire sword, which means you're practically two shot in uh, every enemy in the first area. You have five Estus, you've got a ring that gives you bonus souls. Um, you've killed a... You've got an Uchi Gatana if you want to use it. Um, Bleed in Dark Souls 3 is actually kind of really good. Um, and you've got the best armor set, well, one of the best armor set in the game, and the uh, 100 block shield. Yeah. Like, you can't really, you can't go wrong at this point. You're gonna take barely any damage comparable to any other starting class, and you're gonna do so much more damage compared to literally any other way to start the game. Pretty much. So and there's no reason to start Sorcerer when you can start with a fire long sword. And that's pretty much it for this part. Yeah, so we'll so, see you guys in part two, where, where we're gonna be taking on the High Wall of Lothric. Yeah, which is really the kind of start of the meat and potatoes of the game. Yeah, this is when we're going to really get like balls deep in here. Anyway, see you then guys. Bye. See you guys later.